Welcome back, everybody, to episode 37. I'm your host, Keegan Holland, and with me is my co-host, Mike Jennison. Hi. Mike, coming into this podcast or a couple hours ago, I was unsure if you had seen a single movie this week. And I didn't until today. Okay, I thought it was going to end with, and I didn't. I was going to be very nervous. <laughs> so you saw one. I dragged myself to the theater today, and I saw, saw a singular movie. Care to guess which movie I saw this week? I want to. I think we we talked about this, but I want to say you didn't see it. I want to say you saw Overlord. I did not. Oh boy, no. boy, uh, beautiful boy. No. Boy erased. No. Oh, so you did see the girl in the spider's web. I did. I saw the correct okay. movie. All right, you threw me off there because I I was gonna guess that at first, but it's like <laughs> there's a reason he's asking this question, but I guess not. So yeah. Because I almost saw... did it, but then I did. So. Yeah, I had a feeling you weren't going to. Yeah, so we saw The Girl in the Spider's Web, and then I also saw Overlord on uh, Saturday night. So I'll be talking about that a little bit, but we'll focus mainly on The Girl in the Spider's Web. And this week, uh, Mike, you picked out this beer. We were drinking Founders Breakfast Stout. It's a double chocolate coffee oatmeal stout. Wow, it hit every single base. It's chocolate. So, oh, usually you get a, a chocolate stout or a coffee stout or an oatmeal stout, and this is all of them. So I don't want to build this up too much, Keegan, but this is like the highest rated beer I've ever had it on tap. It's like a 425 or something. Wow. It's held to really high regards, and it's pretty good if memory serves me right. So uh, I'm going to read the description. The Coffee Lover's Consummate Beer, brewed with an abundance of flaked oats, bitter and imported chocolates, and two types of coffee. This stout has an intense, fresh-roasted Java nose topped with a frothy, cinnamon-colored head that goes forever. I feel like I should pour this one out. That's a good sounding label. I was just gonna do it from the bottle, but I might go grab a glass. I have a glass here. Yeah, I'm gonna go doesn't grab a glass. Doesn't help you. Okay, Mike. So, uh, did you crack yours already? I did not. I was waiting for you because I'm a nice guy. What a guy. Dude, it is dark beer season, and I'm here for it. Are you a stout fan? Big time. I do love myself a stout, but about four of those, and I'm ready to go to bed instead of going out. And we uh, we're recording this pretty late, so good good nightcap. Cheers, Mike. My, cheers. My buddy Brett actually drinks stronger beers as the night progresses on purpose. So that's what you're supposed to do. And by supposed to, I think it's just his own philosophy. And I, I don't agree with that. That's a bold strategy for sure. Damn, Ooh. that is fantastic. I can't remember where I had it or when I had it, but I remember I liked it. And yeah, it is awesome. So much flavor. Holy shit, that's incredible. It's almost like chocolate milk. <laughs> no, you know what it is like chocolate milk? Did you have the Jet Black Heart at that? Yeah. Uh, dude, oh, sh- I had that uh, on Friday. So smooth, so good. This tastes like, yeah, this is just delicious. Yeah, I'm happy. I, uh, I think there was like a single option there. I'm happy I got the four pack. It's really good. It's got a, right. a Guinness-like head too to it. I poured mine like an asshole. I didn't really get ahead. Oh. Well, that's too bad. I know. All right, Mike. Good evening. I'm Will McAvoy. And I'm Evan Baxter, and here's what's making news. Good evening. I'm Ron Burgundy, and this is what's happening in your world tonight. First thing, a uh, bit of a sad note. Stan Lee died today, age 95. Tough loss for uh, for pop culture fans. Um, this guy's made his mark in comics, TV, and Right now, movies, most of all, Marvel is the biggest thing going right now. But 95, man, what a, what a run. And he was in pretty good shape until the end of it, right? I mean, Yeah, he was in a bad way towards the end, but yeah, I mean, he was in, he was in movies up until... I think he has some rec- or filmed already. I'm sure, he's, so, I'm sure he's in four already. Yeah. I wonder I'm if, like, because he does, like, X-Men and De- Deadpool and all that stuff, even though Marvel doesn't own them currently. I wonder if like they'll keep him in those ones. Why not? I don't know. It just seems weird. Like I get Sorry. maybe like maybe having Avengers four be his last one and then That'd be kinda cool. Yeah. I don't know. But man, ninety five, that means so Marvel was at its peak in the like, print wise in like the sixties. That means he was already like forty five years old. You think like and he was he'd be younger, but yeah, he was an already a pretty old dude. Which is nuts. That's true. Yeah. So that so I so was like DC more popular like in the 40s and then Marvel was more popular in the 60s. Is that yes. correct? Yeah. But, yeah and Stanley he, had his hand in just about every character you could name from Marvel. 
Even like Guardians of the Galaxy? I think that was more Jack Kirby. I could be wrong, though. I'm okay. pulling up his uh, Wikipedia. I could have sworn there's something that listed all of his... Uh, all the things he did, but yeah, like Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, I think Hulk, Iron Man, like pretty much everyone, every mainstay in the MCU was, was his. So yeah, rest in peace to Stan Lee. What's your favorite Marvel character? Favorite Marvel character? Hmm. Probably, I mean, so on the spot basic, here. I know, basic bitch answer, probably Spider-Man. I'd probably go Spider Man too. Yeah, you got two basic bitches there. The most, and I know we we grew up on on the same Raimi Spider Man movies and everything. Absolutely, yeah, Spider Man. But yeah, ninety five can't be too sad about it. Seeing yeah. a lot of people reaching out to him. Um, yeah, all the MCU actors were posting Instagram stories and stuff. Yeah, yeah, had a good run. What a legend! Yeah, I mean, few people have their had the same impact as him. On yeah. pop culture. Maybe nobody, actually. I mean, like George that... Lucas. Yeah, that's about it. Damn, dude. Yeah. And in more, in more in happier news, Detective Pikachu trailer came out today. Oh, my the God. bizarre film starring Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu. What is this movie? <laughs> we've talked about this movie, like, in advance multiple times yeah, in this know, podcast. We've had, we've had Liam on the show, and he's pumped for it, and he's still pumped for it, according to Twitter, but... What a bizarre thing. I was not looking forward to this at all until I saw the trailer, and now I'm so pumped for it. <laughs> Are you okay? It looks so it looks so interesting. Like it's I'm so, so intrigued weird. by it. It's so weird to see Pokemon with like actual fur. Like Jigglypuff just looked terrifying, but Pikachu was the fucking cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. I thought Jigglypuff was fine. People were outraged that it had fur, but I'm like, I think I mean, it has to. fur. It can't be like Silky smooth. Yeah, I can't. I think some of them were, though. I think, like, maybe Clefairy was in the beginning. I don't know. Mr. Mime is absolute nightmare fuel. (laughs) I know, but it's so cool. I like how dark it is. It's noir. (laughs) (laughs) Noir. But yeah. (laughs) I'm interested to see. I'm excited. I I think think Ryan Reynolds is a wrong game, but yeah, it's just weird. I think Ryan Reynolds was the wrong casting for it. It just seems like it's like almost a Deadpool thing. Yeah, but... he's doing Deadpool, but it makes me laugh. So I was chuckling at, at him being basically peak of Deadpool. And like when there's Bulbasaur crossing the river, I got so excited. I love Pokemon, especially well, the OG the best, Pokemon. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm excited. And like, hopefully this, hopefully they make more movies. Give me live action Pokemon movies. I'm totally down with this. Yeah, if they did an adaptation of like Ash, like that kind of stuff. <sighs> Did you watch the anime growing up? Yeah, I watched season one at least. Okay. Um, actually, I I watched season one all the way through, and then sparingly after that. Super entertaining. The video yeah. game's incredible, obviously. Oh, I think that's so my good. favorite video game of all time. Yeah. And then I got so yeah, I, I had like the Pokédex growing up. I I, I have Pikachu walkie talkie over in arm's length right now from me. <laughs> me Love and you Pokemon. beat uh, Pokemon Snap pretty pretty often. Oh, yeah. Beat it, well, we beat it two years ago and just disappoint how easy it actually is to beat. It's so easy. Look how well, sick these are. Oh, that is sick. Nice yeah. Charizard walkie-talkie. Yeah, um, yeah dude. That, we, get, we get stuck in the same part of that game every single time. We always it's, have to go to like, IGN to look up how to, get, how to advance. Well, you have to do the five pictures of like random things. I always forget what it is. I mean, Pokemon's huge right now, too, with Pokemon Go, and they have new games coming out on the Switch, so it's just prime time to do it. You got a big name with Ryan Reynolds? I'm there day one. Wow. Really? You think it'll be there day one? Yeah. Pokemon Stan over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll be there with you then. Perfect. I'm excited. I think it's July of next year. It's not that far away. Oh, it's not that far away. Nice. Yeah. Um, another trailer dropped. A teaser trailer for Toy Story 4. I don't think this is a movie that me, me and you want, but... Tom Hanks said he cried at the ending, so that made me a little more excited. And this teaser did jack shit for me. Love the song. Yeah, the song was money. I knew you'd love. I knew you'd like the song. That song I mean, was in my library on Spotify already. Oh really? At Judy Collins, yeah. I'm like, I think I know the song. I looked up, like, I have it. Yeah, the song's awesome. So I guess what a I weird was... song to pick though for that—a '60s folk song. But yeah, all the power to him. 
So I was excited to see the, the boys again, you know, that, that brought a yeah. smile to my face. But that's really all it was. There's no story details or anything. There's a new character that, or was he in three? No, new character. Okay. His name's Forky, I'm told. Okay, that makes sense. He is a fork. Were you excited when you saw this? The, the trailer itself? Yeah. No. It's, it, it, it was really disappointing because we were making a big deal about it on social media and it was nothing. But am I ex- I'm getting more excited for four than I was. It's been nine years since three, which blows my mind. It's been nine years, but it's been nine years. But has anything ever finished so perfectly than Toy Story 3? No. Nothing ever has. Nothing ever probably will be. I know. Like, why? I don't understand. What can make. What could they do to make us cry differently than they didn't. Like, I almost cried in three when they almost died. You but almost like, cried in three. I cried, like, a, at the end of three. <laughs> but. What I what I wonder is like I won't cry at the end of four if they're about to die again, you know? Because right. they'll be like, I've seen this before. Unless they actually kill Woody, then I will cry. <laughs> Can you imagine? I yeah, I would if just anyone be would like, do that, it'd be, it'd be uh, Pixar. I wouldn't talk for like two days. I'd just be in shock. Yeah. Maybe he dies. Maybe it's a post credit scene where they kill Woody. Ugh, that'd be the worst way to do it. <laughs> Maybe Andy's parents die. Disney loves taking out the parents. Oh, yeah. Andy doesn't even own them anymore. Yeah, Andy's probably not going to be in the movie. Starts off with Andy's funeral, overdosed on heroin. <laughs> it's murdered. school. Gets <laughs> murdered. Ate a jewel pod, died. <laughs> Tide pod. Yeah, Tide pod. Yeah, I'm saying jewel pod. <laughs> They're really keeping it current with the, with the uh, Tide pod murder. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really have anything else to say about the trailer. No, there's nothing there. Until I see something story. I don't really I, is care. it still about Bo Peep? Do we not know? I don't know. That's the last thing I heard about it, but yeah, who knows. Years all right. That's all I got for news. You got anything else? Uh, yeah, Avengers runtime is currently four. Avengers 4 runtime is currently at three hours. I think you're cool with that, right? I'm so cool with that. I'm cool with that, too. I think the last one was about 240, and it yeah, didn't feel there. like that at all. No, if, that movie so- flies. Yeah, there's so many characters, there's so many different things going on that you it ne- almost needs to be three hours. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you really think about it, the last movie, was about four movies in one? Was there four separate stories? Or three? Three, I believe. Three separate stories? Yeah. I mean, now this one seems like they might be a little bit, they might only be one story told, I guess. Mm. But the characters are still spread out, right? Yeah. The majority of them. At least Iron Man's in space. Yeah. So, I'm cool with three hours. Me too. I mean, I, I would take four if, if I could. Um <laughs> Especially because you imagine you're sending off a bunch of characters, too. So that'll take some time in the third act. Uh, yeah, the longer the better, I say, for this one. I saw someone tweet. It's like, what's so bad about being three hours? It's like they're going to charge more money. It's true. It'll still be $11 yeah, to see this movie. In terms of Disney's reasoning, they can get it in less theaters if it's three hours. Less well, yeah. Times. They'll make less money. Yeah. Mm, maybe. Maybe. It's gonna make almost two billion dollars again, so I don't really think it's too big of a deal. No. So Disney announced its streaming service. More more details about the streaming service. It's called Disney Plus. Yep. And they're shooting for late 2019. Um, they also announced that they're gonna keep Hulu. They'll be majority owner at 60 percent, and they plan to actually add money to Hulu and make that more adult type service. And uh, they're gonna probably raise the price. It's right now. It's only six dollars a month for Hulu. They said they want to raise the price. Yes, yeah, with uh, commercials. It's with commercials. Yeah. And then um, they also announced a couple TV shows that they're planning to start on the streaming service. One being a low key, and one being a Scarlet Witch TV series. Yeah. Either either of those excite you? No, not at all. I like both of those characters, but not on their own um they also talked about a bucky falcon show and a hawkeye show none of those excite me in any way um, i imagine probably the same for you oh not at all i like yeah. the actors but yeah. i would not watch that that's I don't all i got for the new if i'm gonna get this what would it do you think you're gonna get this uh disney plus i yeah. imagine my family's gonna get it so then i will have it um i would not go my way i imagine to be about ten dollars a month maybe more yeah. and um i don't know like if all the disney classics are on there 
that's fine, but I don't watch those movies. Yeah, I'm gonna say, see, I'm the same way. I love those movies. We grew up on those movies, but it's very rare where I want to go back and watch them. Yeah. I think my brother might get it just because my niece and nephew will want to watch it, so I might just hop on that. But I don't think I'll ever buy it for myself. I won't. Yeah, I won't buy it until I have kids. And then if I had kids and I don't have them on DVD, then I would get the streaming service. Yeah. I mean, unless those or, MCU movies or, or shows are awesome, I don't see myself going in. Anything else for the news, Mike? Nope. All right. It will be successful, though. The Disney streaming service oh is going to be yeah. successful. I mean, you can bet on Disney for anything. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's get to uh, the girl in the spider's web. You can't handle the truth. She's gone from suck to blow. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? So, Mike, me and you did a rewind this week for The Girl in the Dragon Tattoo. Check out that if you're interested. This is a reboot, but also sequel to that movie. What are your thoughts? You were uh, a little on the fence with the, with the first one. You appreciated it for what it was, but said so you'd never go back and watch it again. Where do you fall on this one? I like the first one more after watching this. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. Um, I'm also also very happy I saw the first one after after watching this. Uh huh. It helps you, to know those it, those characters. Because you don't get a great background story on a lot of these characters, and in the nope. first one you do. I don't I think did... it's necessary to have seen the first one. No. But it helps to immediately know who everyone is and whatnot. Yeah, it helps to really understand like the background between Elizabeth and Mikkel. Yeah. Um, if you see the first one, I really just. This movie was whatever. I'd it almost was, use the word uh, blah. Yeah, it's a very average action spy movie. It's very different from the first one. The first one is a gross, small mystery, and this is a very paint-by-numbers action movie. Yes. It does first really one's do. a lot better. Yes, and you can tell, I mean, David Fincher's behind, and there's, there's better people behind the first one. That being said... This has some good stuff in it. I think that airport scene where she's breaking like Keith Stanfield out's good, and there's a couple of visuals that are really good. And I think Claire Foy is good in the role too. But basically, she's everything good. else is better about the first one. Actually, they do a lot of cool stuff with the camera in this movie. They really do. There was the one scene where she's like, she was just drugged, and the camera's like. I shaking love the that. She, yeah, I, I and was. Claire Foy's great too. in that too. She's yeah, it, that was awesome. Yeah, it really messes you up. Yeah, but. From a storytelling perspective, the screenplay here and is just blah. Yeah. The it's, acting's it's fine. Like it's it's shot well. Mm-hmm. The score, I like the score. Is it the same score as the first one? I don't think it's Trent Reznor. Trent Reznor yeah. and uh, Fincher are boys. I don't think uh, yeah. you would do this one. It sounded similar. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure the guy tried to try to copy it. Yeah. Mikel's barely in this one. And I like, think it's just Michael, dude. <laughs> it's M-I-K-A-L, right? Yeah. It's probably pronounced his a little differently. I don't think it's Mikkel. I'm, I'm going to start telling people my name is Mikkel. <laughs> <laughs> I decide I'm going to Michael when I go to grad school, too. How about that? You like that, Stan? I mean, I think you prefer Michael anyways, but I'm dead set in calling you Mike. So. I do prefer Michael, but I introduce myself as Mike. That's a whole different podcast episode, though. Yeah, Michael's barely in this. I don't care about Michael in this. Um, his love interest, the other person. Pillow face. It is pillow face. I knew I knew from something. <laughs> pillow face pillow. from Phantom Thread. <laughs> she's fine in this, but like she's is barely that in it. supposed to be Robin Wright? It's supposed to be Robin Wright. Okay, that's what I thought. So like I didn't care for that. Yeah. I didn't really care about any character except for the little boy. That yeah. was it. I mean, I like Claire Foy. It's just, yeah, the movie is just so different from the first one where... The first one's tense, and you're and you're you're in on the mystery, and you're trying to figure things out. This is just like, oh, uh, like, like the first one is a small family drama mystery that like eight people are involved in. In this movie, the world is at risk. Like it's just ramped up so so high, and it's just like I don't really care at this point. I like it was more intimate. Yeah, which is yeah. I wasn't quite sure what they were trying to save, like the missiles. The thing that you get is access to every country's nukes, basically, which is just insane. <laughs> well, why would you ever make that? Man. Yeah. And, like, so what was the antagonist's goal of getting that? See, I was think, thinking about that as well. It just boils down to being, like, trying to get back at her sister. I guess we'll get to this in spoilers. But uh, 
that's um the girl Sylvia Hoax from Blade Runner twenty forty nine. She was uh, I knew I knew her something. Jared I Leto's think what it was. robot. Yeah. Mm. So let's score it before we get into spoilers. I'm giving it a five. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> and a thumbs down. <gasps> I will, wow. Not not even will I never watch this movie again. I will forget this movie exists. <sighs> Damn, that is mean. I don't hate it though. But I'm going to go completely opposite. I'm going to go like 6.5. I'm going to give it a thumb up. I will never touch this movie ever again, though. And I wouldn't really recommend it to anyone either. No. Not a soul. Because there's so many better action movies. And then in the franchise, there is a better movie. What would you give the original when we did it? Seven and a half. Okay. I gave it a seven. So you were higher in the first one. Still higher in this one. Yeah. Man, yeah. Claire Foy is rocking the fuck out of that haircut this uh, this year. I wonder what came first. Probably uh, First Man, and then she just shaved her side brims a little bit. Because it's basically right. the same haircut. Yeah. All right, let's get into spoilers. Yeah, so there's no weird sex stuff in this one, but it is it implied that the dad is sexually abusing the daughters. She, yeah, he definitely did. If this was the first one, they might be showing that shit. <laughs> Like, oh. it's, the first one's so disgusting. You know but, what? I hated all that sex stuff in the first one. I missed it in this one. This yeah. must be PG-13, this one? It has to be. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so that... I thought about that at the end, too. I'm like, okay, why does Sylvia Hoke's character want to basically have the power to end the world? And, like, I, I liked how Elizabeth is this woman that... If you if you hurt women, she comes after you. I like that a lot. That whole premise of her character. And I mm. get, like, for 16 years, you were helping all these people, but you couldn't come and help me. But to go to the lengths that she does to fucking get nukes to, to bomb the entire world was just, like, way too excessive. I would love to see them meet up or, like, go against each other in, in a different way, in a smaller way. I completely agree. It just seemed like... Yeah, it did not need to be the end of the world scenario. No. At all. It was and uh, I really like, yeah, I like how she takes down these scummy guys, but they don't explore that in this movie at all. No. It's like the lack of her doing that. Like, she does it in the beginning of the movie with that guy, and she ties up and gives all the money to the, to the wife. Like, you see it for a little bit, but then the rest of it is her trying to save the world, which it doesn't seem like that character, like, that's what this character does. No. There's way more. There's way more action in this movie, which you already hit upon. Now she can like wheel a gun and stuff like that, which is all she uses is a taser in the first one, right? Yeah, and she still uses the taser in this one too. But this very much feels like the fourth of a series where you need to keep ramping it up. However, this is just the second, or even just the first of it, where it's just like it takes it to eleven when it doesn't really earn it. Yeah, this is a mistake. <laughs> Making I this movie. I doubt, there's no way it's making money either. Like um, there was three, no. three solo roles at my theater. Like three people, all of us were by, by ourselves. Oh really? Yeah, no. I saw, watched it on Bargain Monday in Menor, Ohio, and there was there was a smattering of people. I go ten. Huh. not bad. Yeah, there's no way it's making money though. This episode's going to do nothing for us. Um, no, we will we will lose money on make, making this episode. Oh, absolutely. We're wasting our time. For the record, eight million dollars in the United States this week. Eight million worldwide. Sixteen total. It's got a forty-three million dollar budget. <sighs> Sony's not making another one of these. Finished third at the box office behind The Grinch and Overlord. Nice. Um, I'm surprised Overlord beat it. I'm not, because I'll get to that later. After what the first one did, especially, which did like what two thirteen, on a pretty a modest more. budget. Yeah, hundred million a, dollar budget actually. This is the a first big, one. big flop. For Sony. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I liked uh, seeing Lakeith Stanfield. I love seeing that guy and stuff. I want to see him. I love stuff. Lakeith Stanfield. He's the best. In this movie, though, I wasn't quite sure what his motives were. Just trying yeah, to save so, that? Well, he got it for the U.S. government through the NSA. I mean, we look terrible in this movie. We look so bad. Well, um, we are a terrible country as yeah, far we, as like things go. Yeah. So I was fine with that. Yeah. So his... And, and so like I, I did, the, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Go on. I did like the one part where they go, "We're not gonna get the United States. You guys are in every single war. We're not in any wars." You know, I, I like yeah. that. I was like, "Oh, this is 
good motives behind this. Yeah. That was it's also very dumb, though, because you're dealing with the spiders who are basically like a, seem like a terrorist organization with ties to Russia and stuff. And you're just yeah. going to like, you're going to walk into their headquarters just by yourself with like 20 of them expect to walk out with the fucking program. Hate it. Are you nuts? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like Keith Stanfield at the end of the day, you shouldn't be pulling for him. Yes, he's helping Elizabeth, but his goal is to get it back to the U.S. Where I'd like to have the romantic idea of the U.S., but if we have that program, oh boy. Yeah, I know. We're, we're back to, to big stick Teddy Roosevelt taking over countries left and right. Which is fine. What? Um, <laughs> yeah, I well, I just like Lakeith Stanfield so much. He could have been slaughtering people on screen. I'd be like, yeah, I'm rooting for you, man. You got this. <laughs> Especially in a movie with unlikable characters, it just turned into, I like you, I'm yeah. rooting for you. Yeah. Um, the sniping scene wasn't that cool either. Do you think that was cool? It was cooler in the trailer. Yeah. It wasn't really that cool in, in execution in this. I um, did get weird enjoyment when she took the motorcycle over the ice, though. That was sick. Yeah, there were like, some cool yeah. moments. I like when she she gives the, the king to the little kid and it has a tracker in it. Like That, like that was really smart. Hmm. Yeah, I, I like when she does smart things, but there's less of that to do when the world is on the line as, as opposed to, I'm trying to solve this small mystery. Yeah. And, like, why is she so obsessed with him, being in a relationship with him? Micah. Michael. I, I, I think <laughs> there's three movies of missed backstory that we need to see why they're still together. Or they did, actually, I haven't seen you in three years. So do you think like that was when Rooney Mara chucked his coat? And then drove off in the sunset? Yeah. and then three years later, is this movie? I thought maybe that was a connector, but... I don't it could have been. And that's interesting if that is the case. Because I w- I, when I was watching this movie, I'm like, yeah, there's two th- movies that I haven't seen that are in between this. But like they don't actually exist. Like So that's like what you have to think going into this movie. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. It was fine. If it's I wasn't curly. so tired, I would be maybe a little bit more high on this, but I'm <laughs> tired, and I did not enjoy this movie. <laughs> well, then that's that speaks for itself. Uh, it's currently sitting at a 42% on Rotten Tomatoes with a 49 audience score. Yeah, I gave it a 5. I was right there. But basically where I am at. Yeah. There was something I wanted to say. Like, were you ever... Oh, you know what was cool? When the guy took off his mask and showed, like, how fucked up his face was? <laughs> the no oh. nose and stuff that was like wow holy. yeah another cool visual was the gas mask scene in like the headquarters in the house i thought that was really cool i think sylvia she- hoax character had a cool look to her yeah it was yeah it was also cool like the vacuum scene the vacuum scene was sick i think it's like my yeah. favorite thing but again All this the- fr- this franchise thinks people can everyone's david blaine and they can just breathe forever <laughs> Yeah, that made no sense. She should have been dead instantly. I'm like, Claire Foy, just die. <laughs> you yeah. have no oxygen for like 15 minutes. Yeah, that was a long time. Yeah. They did an opening s- sequence again in this movie. But n- again, not as cool. Like everything not even close. Do is just not as good as the first one. It's shorter too. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. It, it was very clear that in her contract, Claire Foy did not want to get naked. No. <laughs> Unlike Rudy Mara, who's getting naked all the time. And like... I thought the world was the world's gross in the first one, but it works. This one's just because it, it, it makes it something different. This one is just like a generic action movie, which I think you've already said. It just yeah. comes off that way. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Did you like the ending with what, what specific falling, moment? Falling backwards off the cliff, dying. Yeah, she had no other option. No, she could have blew up the world. Well, not in that time. Claire Foy would have lit her up. Oh, Claire Foy got up. The ending was also just not. No, nothing that happened at the ending was like Claire Foy's doing. She gets she gets trapped in the vacuum thing. Lakeith Stanfield wipes out the building. She chases Sylvia Hoax, but then Sylvia Hoax hits that guy and then goes flying into a tree. Like nothing. Like, she has no direct input on the ending of that movie at all. I did kind of like that though. How she, that guy just gets destroyed well, yeah, by that I mean, car. It's cool, but like. Yeah, I know it was unnecessary. Yeah. Also. Yeah, the the two shots he was going to administer one, <laughs> one blinds you forever and one kills you. So like, 
you give the blind one and then immediately give the black one, so who cares about the red one? Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> I know, it's just like, it feels like you get it worse and worse, but it's just like, one option, dead. Yeah. <laughs> so like, who cares about the first option if the next option is just you die? And then, yeah, didn't they pull out the black one too? Oh, it was. Ugh. I don't know. Also, when the airbags go off in the car and then she walks up there, why doesn't she shoot them? Oh yeah, no she reason. Just, she just points her gun at them, waiting for them to get up to shoot them. I. Right. Mm. Because she's not a killer. Also, what medication does she take in order to like come out of that? Amphetamines. He just stores amphetamines. I was going to yeah. ask you that as the as the soon to be pharmacist. Would that? I was hoping. I don't think so. I was hoping it was adrenaline. I was hoping it was epinephrine, but I think that would work. I don't think amphetamines would work, but maybe, man. It led, it led to that cool camera it scene. Le- so. It led to my favorite scene in the movie. Yeah. Oh, should we do that? My favorite scene in the movie was that. My least favorite movie in the, uh, scene in this movie was... <sighs> Where do I begin? Really? I, see, I don't really have anything that's like... There's not really laughing bad, bad. Like There no. isn't the no. Bohemian Rhapsody dad scene. It's just like not that interesting... Not cool. that much fun. No. Like, there's no tension in this movie. You're never like, oh, she's going to make it out? You, you, you know she's going to make it out. You know how everything's going to play out exactly as it does. God. It's fine. It's a five. <laughs> you gave it a five. I know. Totally average. Bad. Yeah. I'm I'm done. You got anything <laughs> else to add? Right. No. I, I want to hold you captive here. Uh, <laughs> probably don't go out and see it. <laughs> you won't. No one's going to. <laughs> We're just gonna get three, three uh, listens. If you were lukewarm, see this movie, and then you hear how lukewarm we're talking about this, I can't see how you go yeah. see it. I'm going to put Overlord first on the episode, and hopefully, pe- more people saw Overlord than this, so they'll, they'll they'll listen. It's definitely the right option. Yeah. All right. Uh, so yeah, I saw Overlord. We were supposed to do a double feature here, but Mike, whatever, you know. What? To be honest, um, I didn't think I was supposed to see Overlord. This movie's good, dude. This is it good? It's good. Yeah, I hate. I didn't like the trailer. I was like, "What the what the hell is this?" It's good. I I, I did a little premature tweet that Matilda Olivier is Bay of the Year. I mean, what just an attractive <laughs> attractive person that is. And and let me tell you, people might not know this about me. I speak fluent French. And she's she from, does uh, from Paris, so I got a shot. <laughs> There was a time we were in Paris, and the taxi driver was asking for fifteen dollars. No, eighteen D suite. He never said D suite though. He just said like five, five. Uh. I'm like, dude, what are you, what are you talking about? I'm looking to Keegan for some translation. He's giving me nothing. I'm throwing euros at this guy until he leaves me alone. He Paid thirty five dollars for that taxi. Oh my god, he never once said D suite. But yeah, this movie, no. Big names at all. I think the biggest name might be Wyatt Russell, who, like, is in, like, who's, three things. Yeah, um, who's only a big main, name because his dad. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, is the main Bill Russell. The, the main character is was the, the son from Fences. Mm. You got a couple Game of Thrones guys in there, one guy from Fargo. But, yeah, no big names at all. It's just it's just a solid movie. It's um, action-packed. It's gory. It's they're calling it a horror movie. It's not really. There is some horror elements. There's some. There's a couple of jump scares that are actually pretty effective. It had me going. I was I was I was freaked out. But yeah, I would. Uh, I I don't I don't know if you would like it though. Not really your kind of movie. But I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. Oh wow! So I yeah, you really enjoyed this. I did. I really did like it. Yeah. And I just lo- World War Two movies are are just so cool of the time period. I love. It's set in France, so you got. You got accents left and right. You got the American soldiers coming in. I do Nazis love myself a good WW2 movie. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say go out and see it if you haven't. I, I liked it a lot. I hadn't seen anything else this guy had done. I think he's an Australian actor. Produced by J.J. Abrams. Yeah, um, well acted. I think we'll see these these everyone in this movie a lot more. Um, and maybe more from this director, too. Well, that's good. Well, I'm surprised how much you liked it. I wish yeah. I would have saw that movie over The Girl in the Spider Web. <laughs> what are you going to do? Did you watch anything else this week, Mike? I did not, Keegan. How about you? Wow, you brought nothing to this episode. <sighs> I was busy. Yeah. I don't know what I even did. You were probably studying, right? Yeah, that's true, I was. 
Yeah. Um, oh, I'm, yeah, I, yeah. Doing a speech on joules tomorrow. Like the unit of energy measurement? No, the vaporizer. The vape. <laughs> the e six. For who? For I need to take a speech class. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, I have been playing more Red Dead. I put in, like, a really good amount of time the last couple of days. And then I got to this point and said, Chapter 3. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm not going to beat this game until 2020. This game is going to take me so fucking long to beat. Are you enjoying it more? Um, <laughs> probably not a great sign. Um, it's, I, I still haven't really had a day to just sit down and play for like 10 hours, which I think like this game like needs you to do. I'm just playing in, in bits and pieces. I'm doing like two hours at a time. Um, yeah, I'm liking it. It's just, I don't know. I never like, I feel like I have to force myself to play it every time. I never like want to play it. I don't know. For a game that's getting like universal acclaim, I feel like I'm on the outside looking in. Yeah. Well, some critics have said the game is clunky and outdated. Wow. And some bad reviews have called it infuriating. I understand that. The controllers are just the worst. Yeah. But it's got 97 on Metacritic, so. Yeah. And it's got 10 on IGN. Like, it's getting incredible reviews. But uh. these are coming from people that got the game like a week early and had to play it all in a week so they probably had like 10 hour marathons and i'm sure in that form it's incredible but playing it as infrequently and as little as i am it's just tough to pick up yeah i feel it yeah um i don't think i've watched anything oh season finale of always sunny this is it was a, not a great season probably the first time that's ever happened in this show's history it's oh, wow. very obvious that they couldn't get everyone together at the same time dennis was absent through most of the season and this they relied a lot on callbacks to previous episodes and stuff but nothing was really original they had a couple standout episodes um the jimmy buffett bathroom episode was really good i like the bogs day reboot and there's a bogs day reboot yeah the all-female reboot it's like a play on what hollywood hollywood's been doing oh really that's yeah. awesome yeah there's some there's a couple good things but most of it was just not great. Yeah, I think that's all I've watched. Oh, I started watching a World War One documentary because of Veterans Day, but then I fell asleep. At least you tried. World War One is just an interesting war. Trench wars, man. It's nuts because, like, yeah, there's, like, there's machine guns and stuff, but there's, there's also, like, mustard gas and, like, Russians with shovels and shit. It's just, like, it's just a clash of the 20th and 19th century all at one. It's so, it's so fascinating. Um, I agree. Yeah, I. What else? I'm seeing a bunch of stuff in theaters this week. It was a hundred years of uh, WW1 too. Yep. The eleventh hour of the eleventh day of the eleventh month. It came to an end. Oh, is that my Veterans Days on that day? Yeah. I should have put that together. Wow. Yeah. How about that? It's pretty cool. All right. So what we're gonna watch this week? Well, we're going to Nashville this weekend. We are. Um. So I'm gonna see Fantastic Beast: The Crimes of Grindelwald on Thursday. I'm going to see A Beautiful Boy on Wednesday. Boy Erased is not out yet? No. Uh, Beautiful Boy is... Oh, what's the... Um, oh, The Front Runner. It's by you, isn't it? Front Runner was somewhere by me. I can't remember where, but yes. Not by me yet. Widows comes out next week. But Widows we could probably out this weekend, too. We could probably wait a week on Widows. Yeah. I will try, I will try to see Beautiful Boy. I am doing a lot of traveling, so I'll have time to read the book, and hopefully I finish it. Then I'll see Beautiful Boy. Yeah. I was going to say our main one is Fantastic Beast, but you are not a Harry Potter fan, so I guess... I've what, never what seen Harry Potter. What are you see this week? What'd you say? I've never seen a Harry Potter movie. Yeah, I know. So what's our what's going to be our main... It Beautiful could be Boy? Widows. It could be Beautiful Boy. I do Beautiful Boy. Okay. That's what, that's what we'll be doing next week. I'll talk about Fantastic Beast. Like I did Overlord, just a quick uh, quick run through and quick thoughts. Until then, thanks for listening. You can follow us on Twitter at movie underscore rebrew, me at Cash Money Keegan, Mike at underscore Ogle Bay. Subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Anything else to add, Mike? Nope. This was a quick one. We did one movie we didn't we didn't really like, and I just did a movie by myself. 
Hopefully it we'll happens. have many more of these. It should be a lot of good stuff coming out the rest of the year. I think this is a this is a weird weekend where you don't have either a huge tentpole movie or an Oscar worthy movie. Nope. This was our Murder on the Orient Express podcast. Same time last year we did Holy Murder on the Orient shit, Express. You're right. Yeah, it was very similar to that. Just no really good movie came out. Going forward, you got Widows next week, Oscar movie. You got you know, you got Creed coming out soon. You got Wreck It Ralph coming out soon. Yep. Um, and then all the oh, Oscar we should do movies. a rewind on the first Wreck It Ralph. I've never seen it. Oh my god! Yeah, we should. We should almost do that and also a Creed rewind. Yeah, we'll definitely do Creed. We could probably do Wreck It Ralph too. We could. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next week for. Beautiful boy. Beautiful boy. A couple, a or couple things else. actually next week. It'll be a, a hodgepodge of stuff. Yeah. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. So, we realized we forgot to do the beer. I was we forgot the beer. So especially short. So, Mike, Founders Brewing Company's breakfast stout what do you got to say it's arguably the best stout you can find it's very very good it is it's incredible i think it might be my favorite stout of all time and i'm a big stout guy actually jet black card is pretty fucking good yeah it's, it's just got a lot of this flavor is more flavorful yeah it's a lot of flavor 8.6 percent too so if you're not careful it'll put some hair in your nuts 8.3 percent yeah 8.3 percent I, I would buy this in a four pack again and I That's what they sell it. it in, if you're wondering yeah. at home. $10. Oh, so when I was at the store, I couldn't find it. I'm just blind as a bat. But I did see um, Harpoon's Dunkin' Donuts Coffee Stout. And I nearly went with that. Wow, that's intriguing. Even once I found Founders, I nearly went with that. But I'm very happy I went with Founders. But yeah, I might just buy that by myself and report back later. I, I, I'm interested. I, yeah. I, I want to know that. Did you remember the Ben and Jerry's? Beer. <laughs> you were just like, I can see one of your eyes in the corner of my screen. <laughs> All over I, the place. I can't see myself. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's horrifying. <laughs> the Ben and Jerry's beer. No, never heard of it. Oh, Who makes it? That's good. Oh, it's, um, I forget. I think Flat Tire. Fat Tire Brewery. Oh, really? Yeah. The people that I, do Voodoo I, Ranger? Oh, yeah. New Belgium. Never mind. Oh, no, it's New Belgium. Yeah, New Belgium. New Belgium makes Fat Tire, and Fat oh, Tire yeah, is the yeah, logo, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it's definitely New Belgium. 100% I can confirm that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you for your reassurance there. Um, but the thing is, I haven't I, – it might have only been seasonal in like one season, sure but it was is. really good. What kind of beer was it? I forget. It's like a milk stout, I want to say. A milk ice cream stout. Wow. I specifically remember – Three winters ago, Derek's now ex-girlfriend brought over a six-pack, and I had a beer of it. <laughs> That's sick. It's a sick story you just told there. I thought I was going somewhere, but... How many calories do you think are in a breakfast stout? I'm going 250. Yeah, it's got to be pretty high. How's the diet going? Are you winning each week? Yeah, I've won 12 of 14 weeks, I think. Oh, Maybe wow. 10 of 12. I can't remember the exact numbers, but I've won a good majority. For those sitting at home saying, what diet challenge? The Holland Brothers plus front of the pod, Jacob Rossi, they do a weekly weigh-in where they, uh, I don't know, how does it work? So whoever loses the most weight gets five bucks from everyone else. If you gain weight, you give 20 bucks to a pot that gets distributed at the end to, to the person that lost the most weight. Uh, my brother Andrew has yet to lose a <laughs> an ounce of weight, and then my brother Brendan, who has been on the show, and Jacob have been hit or miss, more miss <laughs> throughout the trail. And so, I've made a good bit of change, and I'm poised to bring home a big pot. So that's exciting. Fingers crossed that continues. I don't think I'm gonna make make weight this week. I've been eating like a shit bag. There was one time I was over their house, and Ross, you. Killed six bowls of chili <laughs> in one sitting. Some like average ass Aldi chili. He said it was the it best up. chili he ever had. Absolutely insane. Did you have, have you ever had Cody's chili? Yeah. Yeah, our that's roommate. That's great. Our, I mean, our, our roommate, Cody, who's been on the show numerous times, makes an incredible bowl of chili. God. Cody's uh, a vegetarian now. <sighs> I know. I, so I got a recipe chili. from him. 
What's up? So no more chili. He he tried to make a, a vegetarian version of it and it just did not. Nice. Nah, Come on, it's chili for a reason. I know. Get your head out of your ass. Okay, we're actually done this time. Bye. Gucci. <laughs>